Your life. Is that? Your life. Hmm? Your life, she. So, are we live? Yes. Okay. Okay. Bismillah, alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala wa la hawla wa la quwata illa billah. ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد في الأولين وصل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد في الآخرين وصل وسلم وأنعم وأكرم وبارك على حبيبنا وشفيعنا وقرة عيوننا سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم في الملأ الأعلى إلى يوم الدين ويسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى to bless us on this uh, in this time, may I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to elevate our collective ranks. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our sins and our shortcomings. To grant us a, a elevated rank in the company of uh, the righteous and the salihin. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all and bless your families and loved ones. May Allah always bless the al-falah, the unity. And the, um, as we beg him to exact his subtle grace, his lutf upon us all. Uh, we journey in this life uh, begging that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will uh, shower us with his grace and his mercy and accept us as his humble servants. Uh, may Allah uh, grant uh, you. Barakallahu feekum. It's good to be with you. Uh, alhamdulillah. Uh, I know that... Uh, we had a little bit of a hiccup. I uh, just uh, completed surgery on my knee, alhamdulillah, and it's good to be back with uh, the beautiful Al-Falah community. Um, so inshallah, I wanted to uh, share <clears throat> with you a little bit uh, about the um, the spirit of Ramadan. Um, you know, Ramadan is, is, is very uh, close to us, and it's... Uh, you know, last night, <clears throat> um, uh, according to many, and the night before last, according to others, uh, was the uh, night of the fifteenth and of Ramadan of of Sha'ban, which is a blessed and sacred night, uh, Laylatul Ittila. It is the night when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala looks upon uh, His Ummah and looks upon His servants, and He forgives. It's a night of forgiveness. So I ask that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala forgave us all. And he granted us all uh, an abundance of mercy and forgiveness. And Allahumma amin ya Rabbil uh, So uh, I want to share with you a little bit uh, about um, the purposes uh, and, and the sacred kind of uh, reasons that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gifted us with Ramadan and he gifted us with the fast. Because it's important as we're preparing for Ramadan that we um, spiritually orient ourselves. And we really place um, the purpose of Ramadan and the divine wisdom of Ramadan um, in our spiritual hearts and our minds. Uh, uh, begging Allah and hoping that He truly does allow us to have a virtuous uh, and, and blessed Ramadan. And in, surah, in the Quran, in Surah Al-Baqarah, uh, in verses number 183, 185, and 186, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gives us three uh, fundamental purposes that we can think about when we're asking the question of why. Why the, why the fast? Why the Ramadan? Why does Allah will these things? And He says uh, three things. And these become kind of the three principal headers, if you will, um, for the month of Ramadan. In verse number 183, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قبلكم لعلكم تتقون, That Allah subhanahu Allah says, O you who believe that uh, the fast was prescribed upon you, كما كتب, as it was prescribed on those that preceded you, 
لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that you may be God conscious. So number one, we put as a header, taqwa, God consciousness. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in verse number 185, um, the, the, the longer verse when, where it begins, شَهْرُ رَمَضَانَ الَّذِي أُنزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنِ uh, the month of Ramadan where the Qur'an was revealed, etc. Until the end of the verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ And so that you may be thankful. And that becomes the second header. Uh, the second principal header that we place at the top of the month of Ramadan. So we have, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that you may be God conscious. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ So that you may be thankful. And lastly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says at the end of verse number 186, So that they may be well guided and guided with a profound uprightness. So these three principles are ones that I really want us to consider this evening. And inshallah, over the period when we're going to be together, inshallah, uh, virtually over the next weeks and, and months, as Ramadan comes in, uh, we'll talk more about these themes in, in varying ways. But I want us to, to really develop a familiarity with these three I, the, the, pre, the three principal purposes. Uh, the idea of taqwa, the idea of shukr, and the idea of rushd. So here Allah tells us firstly, kutiba alaykum siyam that the siyam, the fast, which means to in the literal uh, meaning of the word يصوم, means to stop and then Allah says in the end تتقون. so he says that the reason why I have prescribed the practice and the act of stopping and withholding and controlling is so that you can pause and that you can reassess and that you can recalibrate yourself in a way that makes you more in line with the essence of your spiritual reality, the essence of your ruh, which is that you are a servant of Allah, and that Allah al haq Allah is the uh, existential truth, Allah is the only reality, and that we are uh, gifted these capacities to know and to think and to reflect fundamentally so that we know of Allah. And we are conscious of Allah. So in a very deeply theological and spiritual way, the idea of the fast, which means to stop and to withhold and to, and to, uh, to, to seize and to discipline, is so that our spiritual apparatus of the qalb and the ruh and the aql uh, and the nafs, uh, these are oriented in a uh, God-conscious orientation. And as I spoke about in the intensive on Saturday, uh, the, the spiritual fast is achieved when a person withholds and controls and disciplines their selves. And yudayyiq majari shaitan, and it chokes and limits the pathways of Satan. And that is through hunger. Uh, and through self-discipline and self-control. And so, brothers and sisters, taqwa is what occurs when we begin to understand the context of our world and this simple creation known as hayatul dunya. We, we, we understand it within the, 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 the greater profound truth and reality of the unseen. And that beyond this seen realm, this experienced realm, which is very limited, by the way. I mean, what we see of the heaven, uh, what we see of, of like water and, and plants and vegetation and trees and, and mountains and, 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 and everything that we see of humans, this is a, a completely insignificant uh, percentage of what is created, let alone of what is in the unseen realm. That's why Allah in the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah says, uh, you know, Allah says that this is the book, that there, are, uh, there is no fault in it, uh, and it's guidance for those who are God-conscious. Who are the muttaqeen? 
the first description Allah gives, الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ Those who believe in the unseen. And so brothers and sisters, why is this so critical? It's critical because so often we live this life completely um, thoughtless and with blinders on. You know, we, we get into uh, the mechanics of working and, you know, jobs and school and children and just, you know, the, the rat race of things and it can be done in a very thoughtless fashion. So the siyam is to stop. Sama tarih is when the wind stops. That's literally what it means. So we stop so that we can reorient ourselves around the truth. And as Muslimin, we have to be people who are immersed in the realm of the unseen. في عالم الغيبيات والملكوت You know, the realm of uh, the angelic realm and the realm of the unseen. Why? Because that's the truth. That's the reality. And we can't get caught up in, in, in the seeming, uh, you know, reality of the matrix, which is what we are in. So I want, you know, this idea of awareness and God consciousness and presence is a fundamental theme that we should be internalizing as we're approaching the month of Ramadan. That I say to myself, this month is a month of me becoming awakened and aware and conscious. And, and, and I really want to come to terms with who I am and what I am vis-a-vis -vis Allah and His Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And I want to orient my life around that truth. And I don't want to, and I want to no longer live in a way that is indicative that my investments and my care and my concern is utterly dunyawi, utterly, you know, a function of this world and, and very often maybe disconnected of the afterlife. Because that's where we are headed. You are dead, and they are dead, Allah says. Secondly, the second, so that's number one, taqwa. Number two, shukr. Allah says, shahr Ramadan, the month of Ramadan. And he begins, you know, kind of putting the most proper <laughs> uh, noun at the head of the, if you will, the, the verse, the month of Ramadan. You know, this is a, a very profound entry into this verse, alladhi, in which Oh, this is, you want to, let's talk about the month of Ramadan now. This is where, uh, this is where the Qur'an, unzila fihi al-Qur'an, the Qur'an was revealed. The Qur'an was sent down. This profound, revelatory reality of the Qur'an, which is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, kalamullah, sent down through the angel Jibreel to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to be for the ummah in all of the worlds to be a source of guidance and a source of healing and a source of clarity, the definitive truth as revealed from Al-Haq wa huwa Allah to all of creation. And this is the most revealing and, uh, and elevating and illuminating truth, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it just starts off with this, you know, do you know what this month is? This is when the Quran was sent down. This is where the Prophet ﷺ would read the Qur'an, you know, and repeat and re review the Qur'an with Sayyiduna Jibreel throughout the entire month. أُنزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنِ هُدًا لِلنَّاسِ وَبَيِّنَاتٍ مِّنَ الْهُدَى وَالْفُرْقَانِ This is guidance for people. And this is بَيِّنَاتٍ Proofs مِّنَ الْهُدَى From guidance وَالْفُرْقَانِ Demarcations between truth and falsehood. So it's not just that it's a general source of guidance, it's also it's the clear proofs and it gives you the clear proof for that guidance. And it gives you the clear proof to demarcate, demarcate between truth and falsehood. So this is what this Qur'an is. This Qur'an is what, what brings certainty to your heart. This Qur'an is what gives you an identity. You know, we talk today, there's so much talk about identity. You want an identity? Your identity is the book of Allah. كَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ سَلَمْ قُرْآنًا يَمْشِي عَلَى الْأَرْضِ The Prophet ﷺ was the walking Qur'an. And so we care about Qur'an. We care about the revealed text. We care about the walking Qur'an, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is our identity. لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ مُحَمَّدٌ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ well, How do we know the haqiqah of that testimony of faith? There is no God but Allah and Muhammad. How do we know the truth of that testimony of faith? The Qur'an and the way of Al-Habib, Al-Mustafa, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is Furqan, it's clarity. فَمَنْ شَهِدَ 
those of you who witnessed this month فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمُ الشَّهْرَ فَلْيَصُمْ those who witnessed this month and who are who are who are blessed to witness this month and this is not in just in reference to the technical um uh you know witnessing of the moon which is you know fundamentally what this verse is in reference to or this part of the verse is in reference to that when you witness the begin the birth of the, or the beginning of the moon uh of the crescent moon then you enter into uh, the month of ramadan but this is there's also a spiritual witnessing that you see this profound month when you witness it with your very essence, with your very being, with your with your heart and your spirit and your soul and your mind, and you bear witness to the sanctity and the sacredness of the month of Ramadan. Those who glorify and who honor the sacred rites and rituals of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's the taqwa of the heart. So you want to you want to witness this month. So, you know, we don't want Ramadan to just come in on us, right? You know, as if it's another month. No, we want to be prepared, thoughtful, aware. Because Allah speaks about uh, the, the month of Ramadan with such loftiness and such profundity because He wants to awaken our hearts and souls to say, wake up, this is a big deal. So witness. فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمُ الشَّهْرَ فَلْيَصُمْ Then you fast it, right? You fast it in, that, in, the, in the external sense and in the internal spiritual sense. وَمَنْ كَانَ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِّنْ أَيَامٍ أُخَرٍ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is illustrating His rahma and His ease and His facilitation. If you're ill or you're traveling, then you can make it up in other days. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His profound beauty and mercy and gentleness and love and care and His rifq and His lutf, His subtle grace, He says, يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرِ Allah wills, Allah desires for you. Allah wills for you. Allah wants for you ease. Allah does not want for you hardship, you know, and that's the, this 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 part of the verse is is written for those who are skeptics, you know, who who find the month of Ramadan to be so daunting and oh my God and I'm just not ready in the fast and I can't and I'm not you know this is not a shaming session. No, a lot of us we feel that way, but Allah here Allah is telling us, listen, wake up. I'm talking to you now. I want ease for you. You read Allahu bikum al yusr. Wala you read bikum al usr. And he repeats, he 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 repeats the statement in the neg in 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 the, in the style of negation, meaning so he affirms, you read Allahu bikum al yusr. Oh, Allah wants ease for you, and He does not want hardship for you. And that repetition, that repetitive style in Arabic rhetoric in Balagha, is lit tawkid. You know, because there are those who are listening when they hear, oh, come on, there's no, you know, Allah wants ease for us. Like, come on. And then Allah affirms, He says, no, I don't want hardship for you. I'm telling you. Yeah, this may be challenging to do. There may be, require some difficulty, but I want good for you. I want ease for you. I want beauty for you. I want happiness. I want upliftment. I want joy. I want mercy for you. I want you to find absolute felicity and salvation. So he gifts us the month of Ramadan because it's a true gift. It's a true blessing. The, 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 Satan, the devils are shackled and the heavens are opened and hell is closed and, and, and mercy is abundant and forgiveness is abundant and uh, rewards are, are multiplied in endless fashion and etc. You can be purified and pardoned and Everything is just is is maximized and beautified in this beautiful divine fashion as a gift from Allah to open up for us a vortex and an opportunity to taste the sweetness of faith. Ramadan is nothing but a beautiful gift. So Allah is saying, I'm, I want ease for you. I want good for you. I don't want hardship for you. And so that you complete the apportioned time. What he took me to I want you to complete what I've asked you to do. Because when you complete it, when you complete it as I've asked you to do it, then you'll get the full benefit of it. So yes, you have to do all of Ramadan. You know, it's it's not it, it, it doesn't work out. You can't go into the gym one day, you know, uh, for ten minutes, do a few barbells, and then you know go missing for two weeks, and then assume that you're gonna oh yeah, you know, I've been going to the gym, but you know, I see another extra role. <laughs> you know, that's because you haven't been going to the gym the way you're supposed to. So no, but he took me to complete the apportioned time. Well, to Allah ala ma hadakum, so that you glorify Allah, and you say Allahu Akbar, God is the greatest. Ala ma hadakum for what He has guided you to, 
Because we should say Alhamdulillah wa shukrillah ala huda al-Islam. That we've been guided through Islam. This is a ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we say Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar for, for this. It's a tear, it's a term of, 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 of endearment and enjoyment and celebration. Tashkurun. So that you are thankful. Because see, when you realize who Allah is, and that's taqwa, you know, la'allakum tattaqun, when you come into an awareness of Allah, then you'll be thankful of Allah. As Imam Ibn Qayyim says, إِذَا عَرَفْتَهُ أَحْبَبْتَهُ وَإِذَا أَحْبَبْتَهُ أَطَعْتَهُ وَلَا بُدْ If you know him, you'll love him. And if you love him, you'll worship him without a doubt. You know, you will necessarily want to worship him lovingly because you know who he is. So when you stop, you become conscious and aware. Now stop and you contemplate and you think and you become more familiar, you become aware. And when you become aware, you realize, oh my God, look at what Ramadan is. And then when you enter into the beauty and the gardens of Ramadan, from forgiveness to Quran, to Salah, to fasting, to all of it, dua, supplication, dhikr, all of it, you say, Alhamdulillah wa shukrulillah, praise be to Allah, thank thank you, Ya Allah, for this. And then, as we close, the last verse, Wa idha sa'alaka ibadi anni, verse number 186, or if my servants ask you about me, فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ I am close. It's, you know, <laughs> I mean, really, Allah is so beautiful. I mean, His language is, I mean, it's it touches the soul. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي And if my servants ask you about me, I am close. You know, Allah doesn't even say, Allah doesn't tell the Prophet, قُلْ He doesn't say, say I'm close. No, He, he eliminates the, that part to say, no, I'm close. He, he just jumps in. I'm close. I'm close to you. Don't worry. I respond to the call of the caller when he or she calls. That's what Allah does. He responds. You know, if we're alone and we're worried and we're concerned and we're sad and we're in need and we're stressed, we have anxiety and we're really even struggling to understand, and we don't know how things are going to pan out. We're worried about our kids. Uh, don't, I'm, I'm, don't worry. I want ease for you. Just immerse yourself in my worship. And 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 Allah, I'm close to you. Allah saying, Allah, I'm close to you. And just ask of me. Ask of me, and I will respond. Brothers and sisters, when ask yourself, when is the last time you genuinely, intimately went to Allah and spoke to Him? I'm not talking in a pre-recorded, mechanical way. I'm talking about genuinely, Ya Allah. Here's my situation. You're driving in the car. You're sitting alone in your room. Talk to Allah. Open up your heart. He responds to the call of the caller. If he or she calls, all we have to say is Allah. I'm close. He's never far. Some people may try to claim, oh, I don't feel the presence of Allah or Allah is far away from me. No, Allah is never far. We may have turned our back, but Allah is never far. So what does Allah say? Let them respond to me. Let them respond to me. Look at all that I'm doing for them. Let them respond to me. Let them believe in me. So that they may have and achieve and attain. Rushd. And rushd is when you are well guided when you are guided in an upright fashion rushd means when you are confident in your guidance like i like to say it's when you're on the highway and you're you know you have your foot on the gas you know exactly where you're going you have no doubts you're not like you know you know let's say the highway is the right path you're not one of those people who jumps on is in the right lane fidgety and then jumps off no you're someone who's on the highway on the correct path on the path of guidance, you're firmly on it, you're firmly footed, you know exactly where you're going, you have absolute confidence, absolute certainty, the way of La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah is unequivocally, you know, affirmed in your heart and soul, you believe absolutely in the way of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you believe categorically in the book of Allah, you believe categorically in the tenets of faith, and the pillars of Islam and the, the, the re dimension of Ihsan, you believe that's rushed and it's unequivocal 
and it's un, you know, shakable. And it's something that's reverberating in your soul. And you know, you, you know, as the Prophet said, if you and he told the he told the, the leaders of Quraysh, if you were to place the right, the sun in my right and the moon in my left, you won't, you won't, you can't take me off of what I'm on. That's rushed. Right? And that's what is is the result if you immerse yourself in the divine reality, you become conscious of Allah, then you go through the practices, the practices and the worship and the acts of worship. And the fast and the prayer, your five daily prayers, your sunnah, your recitation of the book of Allah, your dhikr, all of your acts of worship, your charity, your generosity. The month of Ramadan is a month of giving. Prophet ﷺ used to give abundantly. He, and the most charitable he was, it was in the month of Ramadan. So all of us, we have to have our charity ready. We have to know what, how much we're going to give. And we have to give abundantly. And we can't give, you know, begrudgingly. We have to give with open spirits, you know. Uh, bilal wa la min arshi iqlala. You know, give, O Bilal, and don't fear a, 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 diminish, a diminishment of your wealth from, from the, the master of the throne, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who are razaq, he gives. And so, taqwa, shukr, and rushd. I want these three fundamental Quranic themes which, which really do envelop the reality of Ramadan to be in our minds. This is the goal. I want to be conscious of Allah. I want to be thankful of Allah. And I want to be a Rashid. I want to be, you know, a Rashidun. Those who are upright, well-guided, confidently and uh, confident and firm in the path of guidance. May Allah make us amongst the muttaqeen, the shakireen, and the rashidin. Allahumma ameen, Allahumma ameen. Barakallahu feekum, wajzaikumullah khair. And inshallah, I look forward to being with you uh, for the coming uh, uh, weeks and, 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 and the month of Ramadan, inshallah. I can't hear you, Khaled. You're muted. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, jazakallah khair. Um, I'm not seeing any questions coming in right now. Inshallah, we can definitely set up some time uh, later this uh, month to have a more, in uh, before Ramadan begins, have a more in-depth um, Q&A session with the community, inshallah. I did have one question for you because I know that it seems like this Ramadan is going to look a lot like the last Ramadan, which was uh, which is something very different. Being that you know there's going to be a lot of uh, you know being in the house versus uh, you know general freely going to a masjid or going for tarawih or things of that nature for everyone. Um, just a quick question: what what did what was is some tip that you can give us that we might have that you might have picked up on last Ramadan, that might be a good thing for us to uh, kind of uh, implement this Ramadan when we have a similar setup. Well, I mean, I, I think I, I think it's important that we take advantage um, of the opportunity to have khalwa, to have uh, you know sacred seclusion, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, which is not something we should take lightly, you know. Uh, Uh, as Ibn Atayla said, Jarrad anil of means. And that's an opportunity for to be in intimate company with Allah. So, you know, who knows, you know, this Ramadan, you know, I think some masajid are meeting, some are not. It's kind of in this in between place, but it seems like for many people, still be like a COVID Ramadan. But, you know, this this opportunity is one that we shouldn't take lightly. So, you know, it's nice that we have iftar together, maybe as families, together in our homes or through Zoom. Uh, benefit from some of the lectures and the classes that I'm sure will be on uh, for everyone to benefit from. Uh, and then certainly designate your time in the night where it's just you, the book of Allah, Allah, your salah, your dhikr. And you know, whether that time period is 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, whatever you can manage, whatever you can manage consistently. You know, don't don't try to overshoot and, you know, say, oh, I have to, you know, do this much. And then you set it up and you do it once or twice and then you just stop because we have the zero sum disposition where it's all or nothing. No, you know, if, if what you can do every day after Aisha is a solid 20, 30, 40 minutes of real conscious, thoughtful ibadah, alhamdulillah, you do two rakat, four rakat, eight rakat. Of course, you know, you try to do 20 but if you if you you know <laughs> you you end up less it's 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 not all or nothing and and sometimes people you know get overly intimidated by the prospect of having to pray x amount 
No, it's all khair, alhamdulillah. You know, there's the ideal, of course. There's no doubt about that. But it doesn't mean if you don't achieve the ideal that you neglect, uh, you know, sometimes what they, as, as people say, you know, you sacrifice uh, good at the altar of perfect, <laughs> you know, because you, you don't ever, you know, you're trying to achieve perfection, but good is good. You know, good is not bad. Good is good. So, you know, I would say do that, inshallah, but really try in your khalwa, and I, I have to jump off because I have to jump into another lecture right now, but in your khalwa, in your seclusion, ma'Allah, don't make it about, you know, don't think about yourself. Think about Allah. Think about the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu That's what Ibn Atta'ala says, you know, uh, you know that, that you enter into a space of, of tafakkur, maydanu fikra. You enter into the, 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 the space of thought of Allah and His Messenger Muhammad. Then khalwa, then sacred seclusion becomes a beautiful thing. People, when they spend time alone and they just think about themselves, they think about their pains, their bothers, their worries, their concerns, that becomes very painful and suffocating. But when you're alone, you're thinking of Allah. You know, you're reading, re you're reading about the Prophet Sallallahu you're thinking about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi you're reading the Quran, the spirit becomes enlivened and beautified. And that's inshallah what we hope for. Barakallahu feekum, inshallah. And I'm sure we're going to see each other before Ramadan and then throughout Ramadan, inshallah. Definitely. And uh, just a reminder for everyone else as well, inshallah, um, April 17th, we should have this date uh, circled on our calendars. Inshallah, we're going to have Sheikh Yasser Fahmi, um, uh, Imam uh, Dr. Umar Suleiman, and uh, Imam Siraj Wahaj for our annual fundraiser, which is a very important date. So please circle that. Make sure it circle that on your calendar make sure it's circled on all of your friends and family's calendars as well so we're really looking for a very uh big turnout to uh, help us accomplish our goals of moving into the masjid later this year and uh, with that inshallah we uh, look forward to seeing you in our next program assalamu alaikum